Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about counting routines, something that you can incorporate in just five minutes a day to help build your students' fluency and number sense. Too often we think of counting just for primary grades. It's a kindergarten thing. They were supposed to already learn that. So we're going to unpack how you can use it in different grades. At the start of the video, we're going to get straight to it. Jump into some routines that you can implement tomorrow. If you'd like to stick around for the second half of the video, we're gonna unpack more about math intervention and look at how some of those foundational skills that students um, should have learned that when they don't have those pieces of their number sense, it really affects later years. We're gonna share a little bit about the early warning signs and things that we've heard students say in counting um, incorrectly during math interviews, as well as how to scale up counting routines across the grades as they get older. So let's get started. The first routine is choral counting. Just like choral reading, students are all saying the same thing at the same time. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And your job as the teacher is to pause and help zoom in on certain patterns. What do you notice is happening in the ones place? What's happening in the tens place? Oh, I noticed that every time I skip down to the next row, I'm adding 20. So what do you predict will happen next? The next routine is called count around the room. Instead of having every student talk at the same time, in this routine, one person is speaking at a time. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You might have done this with skip counting before. And similarly, your job is to pause. If we stop here and we made it around one time, predict what number will you say the next time if we go in order? Or how many times do you think we'll have to go around the class before we hit the number 100, 200? Helping them build estimation and number sense reasoning skills. Where you can leverage this routine in the upper grades is to incorporate fractions and decimals. A lot of times students struggle with benchmark fractions because they don't know what comes next. What's one fraction or one quarter more? What's one quarter less? And similarly, just saying the fractions is tough for a lot of kids. When they come into third grade and learn fractions, they'll say things like one fours or uh, two out of four, which we understand what it means, but learning the precise language is something that we practice through this routine. Last but not least, counting collections. In the simplest form, grab a bag, grab some stuff, and have students count it. Doesn't matter if it's pom-poms, erasers, pencils, math tiles. The act of counting objects is really important to students' number sense, not just counting numbers or chanting and singing as high as they can. We know this is important because we've seen how much it relates to students' understanding of one-to-one -one correspondence. In the upper grades, you might even use this to have them skip count. Do you have to count by ones or can you count by twos, fives, tens, organizing your thinking? A successful management tip we've learned from teachers is to change up the quantity in the bag. So for example, low floor, high ceiling, all students or a small group are working on counting collections, but within those counting collections, some might be working with less than 20. Some might be working with 50 or over 100. So now students are able to work within their zone of proximal development. So that wraps up part one, three counting and number sense routines that you can start tomorrow. Which one would you like to start with? Stick around if you'd like for part two, learning about math intervention and how to scale this up across the grade levels.